Hi, and welcome to another edition of Ruins of Empire with your host, Rafael Pinero. Uh, what is censorship? Well, to be honest, what happened in recently in Australia with the Target Australia and Walmart Australia is not censorship. It is troubling up to a certain degree, but it isn't censorship. What uh, happens when you misuse the rating system as the one that Australia has a government-run rating system for games to block certain games? Now that is censorship because it has direct government action or people using government assets to create uh, certain uh, uh, facts, you know, to cancel, to restrict, and to eliminate expressions uh, through media as well as a people's ability to speak in public. In an open democracy, in a true democracy, you should not have that kind of censorship. The Supreme Court many years ago had two standards for free speech as well as for the indecency. Uh, the first one is the uh, marketplace of ideas. The idea that all voices should be heard and that the best voices, the best ideas should win out. Of course, with the current political situation in the United States and money in politics, well, that's a discussion for another channel, another uh, space. But suffice to say that that rule has been subverted quite a bit. The other uh, rule is what I call the local standards uh, rule for indecency what is or is indecent, and essentially uh, what can and cannot be censored, especially when uh, we're talking about children, but even adults as well. The rule itself is again very complicated, but it kind of boils down to the idea, and I think it was George Marshall who said, I cannot tell you, I cannot describe to you what is indecent, but I'll know it when I see it. And essentially, each society, each group, each locality decides their own standards within perhaps some reason, right? And they have to make a positive assertion that this is damaging or uh, influences the youth and stuff like that in some, some very negative way in order to uh, ban it. And you can find that, uh, you know, even in the United States, many bans on uh, magazines, toys, all manner of products are all over the place and even around the world as well. For example, the RU18... Uh, rating in Australia uh, is supposed to allow adults, or adults, as they would say over there, uh, to uh, partake of ad adult games, certain amount of games. But yet, for example, any representation of uh, drug use as seen as a positive use of drugs that enhances the player is still bad. And that's clearly censorship, because it's government action that bans an expression of art or uh, of media. And media. But even rating systems, what government run, and, and the way the United States is done is, uh, um, you know, self-imposed rating systems have their own problems. First of all, what are the standards? Uh, you know, let's look at Japan. Japan has a thriving uh, sexual market, a cultural market. Uh, and, and basically, what well, people know it as hentai, right? Uh, illustrations and... Um, anime or animated series, uh, shows, movies, etc., with heavy sexual content. And in fact, very graphic sexual content that includes a lot of references to incest, pedophilia, rape, uh, all, you know, all manner of rape and all manner of situations, especially a lot of sexual violence. And yet, the actual organs, sexual organs or the act of sex, sexual self gets uh, censored post-release because the law in Japan says you cannot show the sexual organs or the actual um, you know penetration uh, so you so it gets fully animated or, or drawn but yet it gets you know censored post uh, release um, so you can talk about sex you can have highly sexual um, environments you can talk about things that uh, other people would make them very nervous as something that brings pleasure uh, to to the to the audience as is mostly as a positive and yet the actual organs themselves are arbitrarily censored because the law says so um uh, amazon there was another problem also not always the government for amazon uh, basically use their own rating system to basically curtail certain forms of erotica again erotica uh, in the u.s at least uh that had to do with incest and pedophilia or at least uh, mostly incest and a similar and sophilia and that sort of thing, which 
was seen by many erotica writers uh, to be censorship, right? Uh, corporate censorship. Uh, and I think it goes closer to corporate censorship because of the level of control, the, basically the near monopoly that Amazon has on publishing these days, especially online, especially when it comes to certain uh, markets, especially electronic books, which a lot of independent uh, authors rely on direct sales or sales through uh, Amazon of their eBooks to get to their audience. If Amazon says, we're not gonna sell your book, the book doesn't get sold. So there's that aspect of censorship as well. And all of this is very complicated. Anybody who makes a, a declaration, you know, uh, you know, like with the situation with, uh, uh, you know, uh, Australia, that this is censorship, right? Uh, you know, blanket or something like that. To be honest, they don't know what they're talking about. They're talking with their heart, with their emotions, as opposed to with logic. Uh, this I've been writing about this uh, about censorship in books, mostly in books and literature, for a very long time. And I'll, I'll put a couple of links to my blog. We can see what the discussion is going about. It's very complicated about rating systems, from the Hays Code to the comic book code to the modern rating systems in movies and, and television. How, for example, rating systems are not compatible one with the other. How companies, for example, manipulate the rating systems. Because it's not simply a matter of people who want to prohibit things. It's also those who want to sell a product. They also exploit the rating system and the the uh, allure of the prohibited to sell to sell their products. It's not just sex, right, or violence it sells. It's the fact that you're not supposed to see it. It's supposed to be adult. It's supposed to be beyond your reach that sells it. For example, sell uh, sex in in Europe sells as well as it sells in the United States. But I think it has a a, a, a higher edge in the United States because in the United States sex is seen as something that should be curtailed. But violence is okay. You know? On the other hand, violence sells somewhat differently in Europe because violence seems to be curtailed because of the history of the different countries, right? Uh, you know, <laughs> Europe has had a lot of problems with rebellions, revolutions, interesting warfare, genocide, um, especially in the 20th century. And so their take to violence and social disorder, uh, it's, uh, it's complicated. Where the United States doesn't tend to have the same exact history. Many similarities, but not exactly the same. So different attitudes in different places. Um, so first of all, again, making a declaration of outright censorship just because you, you want to see a product is uh, in any form. Again, you're talking mostly with your heart and not with your mind. It is a very complicated issue. Also, rating systems are always problematic. Another problem with rating systems is, for example, the, the, the top and bottom of the rating systems usually get abandoned. Because again, the people who want to sell your product, especially people who are in the you know main uh, producers, not the artists, not individual artists, uh, the author or a small team of game developers, want to put a, a piece of art, a piece of, of game, or or uh, a book or something like that. You know, they're they're the ones who might be pushing the boundaries, but they almost always do it alone. But when you talk about a corporate entity. They're, they have a different uh, take on this. They get, want to push the boundaries in order to sell something, and they play with the boundaries. Uh, we've seen this, for example, with movies in the United States, wherein um, you know, it used to be that the old X rating was abandoned because nobody wanted to make an X movie because theaters were not distributed. Um, they, then you know, pressure was put on the, uh, on the rating board, uh, the movie industry to say, no, no, we have to reclassify. Let's have NC-17. And let's also add another uh, classification called PG-13. NC-17 was supposed to be the new X. Well, guess what? A few movies were released on NC-17 and most of them bombed. Uh, because people had the correlation with X, right? It was supposed to be this prohibited thing. It was, it was like, ironically, it was too far. Right, it went too far in the in uh, uh, beyond the line. It seemed to be too explicit, too violent, too much of a good too bad thing. What happened, of course, that that instead of making R rated movies more popular, the R R rate rating became the new X. And now you don't see R rated movies. I mean, it's very rare to see an R rated movie. On the other hand, uh, G movies also kind of be abandoned because they were seen as being too sugary, too sweet, right? And so many movies, say Disney, which was a, one of the biggest purveyors of G, of general entertainment, now makes most of the movies PG. And the rating that is most common right now is PG-13. 
which is almost meaningless, right? It's supposed to be 13 and above, uh, you know, for teenagers and adults. So basically, most movies are now catered, supposed to have catered to teenagers and above. And also, for example, if you watch things in, in like South Park and how they work with the sensors, and they are sensors, you know, basically the same, uh, you know, the studio themselves, the people who make the movies, uh, the TV studios and the, and, and the uh, corporations say, you know, you can say this word X amount of times, but if you say it 12 times, it's okay, but you say 14 times is, is too much, right? And it can become one of these battles which is just nonsensical, right? Uh, and, and for example, in the late 1990s, it was again pushed to uh, go into the taboo areas that TV wouldn't allow, like, for example, especially network TV, uh, uh, male nudity, nudity in general, uh, but essentially male nudity uh, and frontal nudity, and swearing after uh, a certain hour, right? Late night TV and that sort of thing. But in in Britain, past ten, you can have nudity and you can have all the swearing in the world, right? Um, another aspect is that when sometimes when the rating systems or censorship systems break down, you have a situation where people go like, "Oh, now we can do this." And there is a confusion between what is prohibited and what is adult, right? What is, in fact, meant to be for adults and what should be allowed for adults. Uh, it happened in Spain, for example, when uh, the, the Franco regime, which was a, a fascist regime, fell in the late 1970s and uh, it transitioned to the monarchy, to the current monarchy. Uh, now it's a second uh, king. The, the situation was that in the 1980s, Spain became a liberated country, right? It had a booming economy, became a liberated uh, country, and all of a sudden, swearing up and down, you know, all the movies and television shows was everywhere. Nudity, mostly, you know, uh, women being topless, but also front, uh, male frontal nudity, female frontal nudity, sex became very, not very graphic sex, not really, you know, pornography, but certainly sex was there and nudity was there in, in abundance. To the point that people just got tired of it. It was like, you know, whatever, it's just part for the course. The more they showed it, it sort of backfired. Uh, same thing happened with comic books in the United States. Uh, the comic book code uh, prevented, for example, a show of blood and a show of, uh, of you know, any type of nudity to be suggested sex. Guess what? As the 1980s uh, progressed and into the 1990s, the comic book got weaker and weaker and weaker. Uh, to the point that it basically got ignored and it really died in the 2000s. I think 2010, 2011 was when it finally, the office that ran the comic book code, which was an industry, a joint industry process. It wasn't, it was no, it was not a government uh, institution, basically closed. And um, when it did, by that time you had, you know, you had uh, the clothing of heroes, basically female heroes go from tame, you know, skirts at times, and maybe a leotard to, to, to basically plunging cleavages, and, you know, uh, G-strings, and every woman, and every, all the, the superheroines, especially, were had, you know, a deep bust, or bigger, and boot windows, and guys, and, you know, you know, these, um, caught pieces, and, you know, and also a lot of violence, a lot of swearing, a lot of violence, because, oh, no, this is the adult thing, right? This, we were not supposed to do this, now we're going to do this, people are going to come in because they're going to, they're, they're going to buy on it, but eventually what happened is that people got tired of it. It's still there to a certain degree, more, there's more bloodshed and more swearing that I would be more comfortable with, in some cases, like, that just seems just unnecessary, it's like, yeah, I get it, you know, you, you killed a guy good for you, right? But it, it there was a confusion between what is what is marketed for adults or things that adults can understand and something that is actually adult, right? And adult themes, something has a, a, a measure of depth to it that requires and would entertain adults. And so when you have the breakdown of a rating system, whether it's a government system, a form of censorship, or simply an abandonment of... Uh, of a rating system, you can also have people just go and, you know, go extreme, go like, oh, we have to do this, we have to go full board, because otherwise, you know, this is this, now we're free, we're liberated from the limits. And essentially, the market basically corrects itself after a while. People just get tired of it, to be honest. Uh, or if you do have a rating system, whether it's a government system or not, it gets manipulated, right? Just because both sides are manipulating the system. People who want to prohibit, of course, want to push the prohibition as as far as possible, but they also want to have enough to condemn, right? 
if the if there is as a hint of sex or hint of no, if you're a religious group against homosexuality and Hollywood is showing homosexuality, it's like, oh, we have to ban this. This is bad. We have to fight against this, right? But on the other side, Hollywood might be willing to say, well, you know, we're not going to show full frontal male nudity. We're not going to have two guys having, you know, going at it, you know, like, a, like was gay porn, but we can have a gay couple kissing, you know, we can have a lesbian couple kissing, you know, that, that, that is racy enough that people will go, oh, wow, they're being liberated. So there's a certain, you have to approach this both with a certain amount of understanding of the complexities, also with a little bit of cynicism on all sides. GTA has been a company that both suffered from uh, the worst of this with the coffee mod. I mean, when they went too far, essentially, and and they 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 stemmed up the pressure by saying, "Hey, okay, well, we're gonna we're gonna have uh, we're gonna do a recall of Grand Theft Auto San Andreas." Of course, the recalls are voluntary, so people didn't want to return the product, and they didn't. And any new release is going to be edited and we're not going to have that mod, right? That was too far for them. But for all the longest of times, they always uh, marketed GTA to be an adult product for adults, right? With adult themes. Um, they have avoided uh, one particular aspect, which is what, what I call, and this is going to sound a bit idiotic, but it is true, called backdoor advertising. In fact, they even mocked it in the same game in San Andreas. The idea of selling products are connected to the main IP, like toys, posters, and stuff like that, that are marketed for a younger audience. And that's a way they can get around one rating system by exploiting another. So if the, if the parents go to KB Toys Tour, if they're still open, or look, whatever they sell toys, and they see a figure, uh, of an action figure of a movie that's supposed to be PG-13 or R-rated or whatever, they're like, well, that, that doesn't look uh, so menacing. Next time the movie shows up in Netflix or uh, in... in on cable, something like that, or or they go to a red box and rent. It's like, oh, fine, I'll, I'll rent it, whatever. You know, they already have the toy. They're already a fan of the movie. I'm not gonna, uh, I'm not gonna tell them no, right? Uh, it's a way of, again manipulating the system. And finally, uh, this is a response game from um, from Rockstar uh, to this uh, this this problem, this situation, is that uh, they basically said, um, you know what? the old canard of well if you don't like it don't buy it if you don't like it don't watch it you know, switch the channel watch something else play something else that to me let me put it this way i find that although i'm and you guess but if you haven't guessed it by now i always try to uh, be on the side against censorship right uh censorship to me is inherently wrong especially blatant censorship but I do understand that there are many fine points and you simply cannot be brushed aside. In order to actually fight true censorship, you have to understand what it is and the implications of all sides. And I try to understand it fully. Now you will say, well, this is good, this is bad, and that's it. Having said that, one of the implications of this is that I find that kind of uh, talk to be, and as, I want to be as blunt as possible, I found it to be cowardly. It is a cowardly dodge. Hollywood has been using it for a long time. Some writers have also been using it for a long time. It's not always appropriate. In fact, most of the time it is inappropriate. Listen, Rockstar, if you make a game, you own the game. Whatever happens in that game, you own it. You made that game. You allowed a situation to happen. This is, you know, if, for example, people are criticizing that you can uh, victimize a sex worker. Yes, you may not compel the players to do so, but you created a game that has the mechanics that allow for someone to do so. You could easily have said no, you, you, for whatever reason, just like what happens with games that don't have children or don't allow you to harm children. You're going to say, well, you know what? You're not allowed to harm prostitutes, right? People might complain about it, but you said, but you decided that no, you know, you are not going to make any distinction between any of the civilians. You're not going to have children in your game because last time I checked, children are mentioned in GTA games, but I've never seen a child in GTA games, right? You decided not to have children because you don't want the players to harm children. Also, it saves in the budget. Now we have to animate another set of characters. But uh, at the same time, you decided that you could have harm of everybody. Anyone, anyone in the game can be run over, shot, beaten to death, etc. Okay? You can crash aircraft on top of their heads. You can do whatever, right? That's fine. That's a decision, design decision that you made. You made that design decision. You own that design decision. You know, you put that game mechanic there. You own it. Don't run away from it, okay? 
Don't give me this. Oh, no. <laughs> no, right? If you're not willing to defend something, if you're not willing to stand up for what you're making, then don't do it. It's mean, that simple. If you don't have a good defense, don't put up a defense at all. You know, But don't tell me, oh, you have a choice. Yes, I have a choice. I know that. But that doesn't spare you from criticism. Again, that's the sort of the other side of the marketplace of ideas. Just because I can say something doesn't mean that I can say that in impunity, right? Other people also have the power to make a counter argument. And I got to be prepared. Just like when I'm making this video right now, this audio recording to go into the video, I own every single word that is coming out of my mouth, right or wrong. That means I got, if somebody challenges me, at least I have to make an effort to say, yes, I own it. This is the reason what I say. I may never convince anyone, right? I might be attacked for it. But guess what? I own it. It's my words. Just like you own the game. Well, that is all for now. I hope you enjoyed this discussion. I hope this serves as sort of a primer to what's going on, gives you an idea of the complexities of, of this issue. I mean, anytime you somebody says cry censorship, you're like, you know what? Uh, there's a little bit more there. I mean, this would in fact take a, a, a panel discussion multiple panel discussions to really explore this. I'm going to give, again, I'm going to give you some links below so you can explore the whole subject and get a better idea of what I'm talking about, the history of censorship, different codes and settings, etc. And you can explore it better. Uh, but for now, uh, I hope you enjoyed the show. I hope you enjoyed the discussion. Uh, and I'll see you when I see you. Good night.